Johnson, who has been booming kickoffs throughout the season. One reason Seattle's kickoff coverage is so strong in a second year out of UCLA, getting set to kick away to Fulton Walker out of West Virginia, an explosive return man, led the National Football League, averaging 27 yards per return. The Dolphins and the Seahawks in this AFC Divisional Playoff game. And we're underway. This is Walker. 15 yard line, and again, good coverage by the Seahawks. Dan Dorning leading the assault, 17 yard return. Here's Dan Marino back in the starting lineup, still wearing a brace, returning after missing the two games with the knee injury. Tony Nathan, Dolphins' most consistent running back alongside Andre Franklin. And for Andre, it's been an offseason. Mark Super Duper headed to the Pro Bowl in his second season. Matt Moore on the other side and the tight end Dan Johnson. Miami first and ten. And the give to Franklin. Andre Franklin up near the 25. The nose tackle, number 72, Joe Nash. A nine-yard pickup as we check out the Dolphin front line, and they have an outstanding. There's the veteran Bob Kuchenberg, 36 years old. Dwight Stevenson also headed to the Pro Bowl. And Newman at right guard, 11th year out of Duke. And Eric Lexo in a sixth season out of Tulane. It is a second and one. And the lone deep back is Tony Nathan. And Marino picking up the first round with Duper. Dave Brown on the stop as we check out the Seattle defensive ah. seven. Jacob Green comes in with 16 sacks and is tied for third in the National Football League. But O's tackle Joe Nash, second year out of Boston College, and Jeff Bryant on the right side. He's chalked up eight sacks. The linebackers, Bruce Schultz, he's the outside man on the left. Shelton Robinson, second season out of North Carolina. Keith Butler on the inside, and Greg Gaines replacing the injured Michael Jackson. From the Miami 30-yard line. And Marino with good protection. Again, it's Cooper, and again a first down. Part this game begins with the Miami Dolphins against the win, and Dan Marino with that knee injury, been idle for four weeks. Some question as to how he has adjusted. Well. Here's a clear indication. His favorite receiver, a young man with blazing speed, who leads the Dolphins in receptions this year, a thousand yard receiver in 1982, did not touch a football in the NFL. This year leads the team, goes to the Pro Bowl. And Bob, this uh, young man who became a starter against Buffalo back in October the 9th, the same game that Dan Marino emerged in the starting line of first down for Miami at their 43. Well, the cutback by Nathan, a short pickup, Robinson and Butler on the stop. A look at the Seattle secondary, and they have allowed 33 touchdowns this season. That could be the vulnerable spot as this game develops. Gary Justin and Dave Brown on the corners. Kenny Easley and John Harris are the deep men. Marva comment to this point, the Miami Dolphins going with the one back offense, two tight ends, two wide receivers. are just underway three minutes gone by and Marino to put it up again nice catch John Harris on the tackle as Nathan came out of the backfield and a penalty flag down Marino with the ball up high ready to throw it the first time Nathan shows his front the ball is there watch the face mask by Harris and there'll be yards tacked on, five yards. Inadvertent the face mask. Face mask, number 44, is the first down. Uh, John Harris, as you heard the referee Fred Wyatt make the call. Now that's not an automatic first down. It's five yards. It happened to make the first down. And how many times have you seen a Miami Dolphins in the opening drive of a ball game 
take it the length of the field, lead seven to nothing. They're on their way right now. First down at the 44. Andrew Franklin with a penalty marker down. Combination of Jeff Bryant and Shelton Robinson on the tackle. All right, that'll be motion on Nat Moore. He had two guys going. Illegal motion, Miami. It's going to be interesting to see with a two-week layoff by the Miami Dolphins what effect it might have. Well, Don Shula over the years has had ball clubs that have been rarely penalized. In fact, Reggie McKenzie of Seattle claims that Shula intimidates civil hey, officials. Yeah. Number 85, first down. Bob, do you buy that? No, I do not. Uh, I think that's a comment from a player out of the AFC East for a number of years. Yeah. Buffalo. I'll give you my theory on Don Shula and why the Dolphins aren't penalized that much a little later. All right, the ball at midfield. And this is Nathan. And coughed it up. Seattle indicating that uh, they have recovered. Let's see what the call is. They're going to count him down. That the ball popped loose with the contact with the turf mark. Miami retains possession. But one thing I can tell you, this Seattle team is a defense that is a turnover defense. They try to make the big hit. Jar the ball loose. Watch. His helmet hits the ground. He is determined as being down there. But we'll see the ball pop loose. He's down. I think it's a good call by the official, but it's hard to believe that in a split second they can make the right decision. Knox, of course, does not agree. Woody Bennett now in the Miami backfield for the second and ten. And Marino. Oh, God. Super was able to clear the deflection. Blue pass that was deflected, and Mark Duper was able to come up with it. Mark, first of all, Greg Gaines from the outside to the right, you'll see him make, get pressure on Marino. That's why the ball is thrown up. Then it bounces off 57, Shelton Robinson. <laughs> and when you have a season like Duper has had this year, the ball bounces your way. It's a completion, and you go on. So that is catch number three on the afternoon for Mark Duper. Roy Foster listed as a right tackle, utilized frequently as a tight end, is in a tight end right now for this third down and one at the 36. Has the first down. Mono Tiasasopo on the cover-up. So the steady Dolphin drive continues. Exactly what Chuck Knox did not want to happen. First possession, ball straight down the field. Let's watch that reception by Duper once again. Shelton Robinson had certainly had a chance here. I think he was so surprised, but watch Duper. Just the second year he's played football, one in college, and this complete season. But he just happened to be in the right place at the right time. And Robinson misses an opportunity. And Miami goes on. First down, Seattle 33. Nathan. Picked up the yard. Tony Nathan, who led the NFL back at 81, averaging five yards per carry. Last year, injury hit. This season, averaged about four a carry at second leading rusher on the Miami Dolphin ball club. Marv, you notice on the back of the Miami Dolphins helmet, a number 50 in memory of Larry Gordon, their starting outside linebacker who tragically died in training before he even came down to Miami this year. So this season dedicated to Larry Gordon. Ninth play of the drive is upcoming. And Marino going behind that ball. Ball was tipped. That Moore has made quite an adjustment from big play man to a possession uh, receiver, what with the emergence of Mark Duper. Duper was a complete surprise to this football team. I mean, the stats he's amassed a thousand yards, he's done it about half the season. As you said, he and Marino can seem to come on at the same time in the season about the New Orleans game. And since then, Miami is an unstoppable one. Ten of their last 11, five in a row. 
And it's a third and ten at the 33. Mark Clayton now in at wide receiver. And again, it was deflected. Good hands by the Seahawks. This time, number 77, the right end, Jeff Bryant, getting a piece of it. Which is rather unusual. Seahawks had a blitz, and Bryant comes back in coverage. The ball will come right straight at us. There you see Bryant, defensive end, back in coverage. Just happened to have his, have his helmet in the right spot. And he deflects the ball. It was intended for Joe Rose. And here is... The man the Dolphins call the world's biggest punter at a listed 243 pounds. But uh, what a rookie season it has been for Reggie Roby. It's Paul Johns back at his 12-yard line as Roby Angle. Going to catch it. Inside the five. Not a bad little play, right? Forget the bounce. I'll go down here and catch it. Robert Sowell, who has been outstanding on special teams, making the grab of that 31-yard coffin corner punt. Let's watch a comparison of the two punters for the Seattle Seahawks. Jeff West, when his uh, ball makes contact, when his foot makes contact with the ball, watch his left foot off the ground. Now, in Reggie Roby's case, rather interesting, watch his left foot. That is one limber individual for 6'3", 240. And you can hear the reaction from the crowd here at the Orange Bowl. Seattle to the offense for the first time. And they go double tight end, starting out from the four-yard line. It's Kurt Warner. Oh, nice move off the hole on the right to reach out to the 10-yard line. Miami holding onto the football for some six and a half minutes. Dave Craig, six up, three down since entering the starting lineup. And the running backs of Bryant alongside Warner. Paul Johns at one wide receiver spot. Steve Largent headed to the Pro Bowl to the veteran tight end, Charlie Young. So a look at the offensive big guns for Seattle. Second and four as Warner picked up six. Bryant in front of Warner. And here's Warner following Bryant. Kurt Warner making the cut. Stopped by Bob Brzezinski. Ron Essing. At the uh, left tackle, Edwin Bailey replacing the injured at one arm, Richard McKenzie. Blair Bush at center. Robert Pratt, longtime starter for the Baltimore Colts. Steve August, the lone survival of that extensive Tony Dorsett trade. Seven and a half remaining in this first quarter with no score as we check out the measurement and just shy of the first down are the Seahawks. Marv, this Miami defense creates unique problems for every team that they play because of the positioning of A.J. Douay, which we will try to follow throughout the football game. He's a gifted individual. He can play linebacker and defensive line. He lines up in about 11 different positions, and on each specific play for pass protection and even for some runs, everybody on the Seahawks offense must know how we're going to treat him this time. Is he a linebacker or a defensive lineman? 77. Can, can there be too much concern with following? Yes, to a point. I will be checking out number 77, A.J. Dewey. They go three tight ends. Third and inches. Warner has the first down. Kurt Warner. Kurt Warner, who rushed for 1,449 yards to lead the AFC, and this is rookie season. All right, let's look at A.J. Dewey and one of his responsibilities as a defensive end. Kind of gets stood up, but he stands his ground. He did his job, but watch Kurt Warner. An outstanding running back. Watch his little jitterbug right there. Sets up a block, cuts inside. Tough runner, along with being a very elusive runner, Mark. And it's been all Kurt Warner at the start. Three carries, 14 yards, first down, Seattle at the 18-yard line. No score for midway through the first quarter. Now Colin Bryant. Colin Bryant. And his 11th season out of uh, Colorado. Had an excellent preseason. And that hurt by the arch problem. The tackle, as we check out Miami's defensive unit. And Kim Camper on the other side. Outstanding linebackers. There's Dewey alongside of Rome. And on the uh, right side, on the outside, is Charles Bowser. 
second down and about five. Seattle at a 23. And here's Water. Out to the 25-yard line, so the uh, short pickup. William Judson, who replaced the injured Don McNeil. Gerald Spall, who has five interceptions on the season. And the Brews brothers, Glenn and Lyle Blackwood. In fact, uh, they say that the Nickelback, uh, Mike Kozlowski, is now an honorary member <laughs> of the Brews brothers. You mean after those two interceptions returned for touchdowns against the Jets? Yes, I would think so. Third down and two. Across the 25, Largent in motion. And Craig putting it up for the first time and has the first down, Paul Johns. Off the spin to the 33. Marvin, that's it. Seattle came in with some extra receivers. Miami went with seven defensive backs. And still Seattle was able to get the ball to the receiver that they wanted. Shotgun, he's looking outside. Johns looks like the alternate receiver, but he makes himself big, turns around there, and of course for the defensive back to get to the football, it's got to be interference. Big play. And it's a first down. Seattle at their 34. Seahawks have won three in a row. That's the longest streak in the eight-year history of the ball club. They come off the wild card victory over the Broncos. And a Miami hand able to get a piece of it. Looked to be Mike Charles, there he is, number 71, the huge rookie out of Syracuse. He of the levitation dance, a dance that Richard Todd did not appreciate some You're two right. weeks back. Uh, Charles got to, he even got Don Shula upset, asking him not to do it. He doesn't like uh, opponents taunted. He'll come in there and rest Bo Camper. They can't seem to get him under 280 pounds. <laughs> He's got a little belly on him, and Shula doesn't like it, but he plays very well. Second and ten. Seattle at 34 yard line. Kurt Water. Out to the 36. So the short pickup. Great move by Warner though to avoid a, a loss of yardage. He had 55. Ernie Rhone in there free. Now one of the things the Miami defense does with moving Due around. They try to create a little bit of confusion at the line of scrimmage, Marv, to put a split second of doubt in the offensive line's mind. Here we go. Two, four, six, seven defensive backs. And lining up against this third down and seven. That's Johns in motion. Oh, the quick pitch knocked down by Kim Bocamper. Now you see what they've got. Seven guys in coverage. And you see Bocamper come out. Bocamper is lined up right here. He comes out in coverage too. So the confusion on the line of scrimmage by the Seattle Seahawks that was intended to Largen at the top of the screen. A little slant in. Bocamper draws a block, then drops back in coverage. That's Arnsparger. That's Arnsparger, the defensive coordinator. He drives you nuts. And Bob, that was a uh, Akeem Olajuwon rejection yes. by Kim Bocamper. Mark Clayton back awaiting the Jeff West punt. Usually gets the good hang time. This is Clayton. 25. Great throw. The punter is back. Clayton taken down by the punter, Jeff West. But a penalty marker is down. It's a 40-yard return off a 45-yard punt by West, who made the tackle, but they're calling it back. Whipped by Miami. That's unusual for the Miami Dolphins. When the, the ball is punted, all seven officials on the field have one responsibility. They are looking for illegal block in the back or kick. They don't really have any other responsibility. They're going to catch a player every single time he does it. And Fred Wyatt marking it off. We have 321 left in this first quarter. No score. Miami had the ball for six and a half minutes. The Seattle drive was stopped. Here's the call. Illegal block in the back. 
first down. Miami taking over at their 20-yard line. A timeout has been called, so when we return, 3.21 remaining. First quarter, no score. Well, the Dolphins and the Seahawks kicking off our coverage of AFC Divisional Playoff competition tomorrow, starting 3.30 Eastern time, the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Los Angeles Raiders, who were beaten twice by the Seattle Seahawks. So Miami to the offense. Andre Franklin stopped by Keith Butler. Marv Albert with Bob Trumpy from the Orange Bowl to Miami. Temperature at 51 degrees. It is a very nippy, chilly day here in Miami, Florida. Andre Franklin is limping uh, toward the sideline. It's been an off season for Andre. Banged up both shoulders on one play and has not been the same. Very slow to recover from that injury. He really gets hammered here. Watch this. Keith, Keith Butler, 53, along with Jacob Green. And you see Green has his hand uh, around his leg. Strained his knee a little bit. Woody Bennett now replacing Andre Franklin. And again, it's Duper, a favorite target of Marino Dave Brown, the right quarterback on the stop. Now, one thing Don Shula says about Mark Duper, he's just scratching the surface of his talent. Dave Brown in coverage gives him a wide cushion because of his blazing speed. And I have a feeling that Miami will continue to throw that pass until they can get Dave Brown and the other corners on the Seahawks up on the line of scrimmage. Eight yard advance, third down and two, two and a half left. In this first quarter, we have no score. Dan Marino back in action, still wearing a brace, returning after missing two games with that left knee injury. Bennett. Woody Bennett running hard for the first down. Bennett in his fifth season out of the University of Miami. Began his career with the Jets. Back scored a go-ahead touchdown to help beat the Jets in the AFC a title game here last season. Power block. Tight end and tackle on Jacob Green. He can't fight through it. Bennett right up there in the nice little alley created. Kuchenberg pulls in front. He kicks out on the linebacker. Bennett pulls up. That's Newman pulling. Excuse me, 64. There's a nice little alley there for Bennett. Big first down. And it's a first down at the 34-yard line. That four in motion. And here's Tony Nathan. Keith Butler on the stop. Correction, David Overstreet. Barb, we just heard that Tony Nathan went into the uh, locker room for x-rays on his rib. They certainly need Tony Nathan. Overstreet been much maligned. There's Tony Nathan going in. He's their second leading receiver and all-purpose back. Overstreet's had problems with fumbling the ball over the last two regular season games. He had a good day rushing against the Atlanta Falcons and an excellent day rushing against the New York Jets. Interesting thing about Miami. They have not had a running back over 100 yards in 1983. To see the first down has been picked up. Don Shula was down on uh, David Overstreet following a preseason, and this is a guy who had fumble difficulties while playing in the Canadian Football League. But as you say, the last two games has come on. Offensive huddle over there on the Seahawks sideline. First down at the 44. Woody Bennett now, the lone deep back. And this is Bennett. Again, the extra effort by Bennett, but Greg Gaines, the outside linebacker on the right, able to make the stop. Gaines replacing the injured Michael Jackson, who's had a real rough injury season. Andre Franklin, who took a hit two plays back. Ankle being retaped. Tell you, Nathan being out, uh, that has a real effect on Miami because he's their uh, multi-purpose back. Now Overstreet's got to fill that role. And not only does he fumble, he's had trouble catching the ball. And then it's Overstreet on the backfield. Overstreet on the handoff. Big hole. And Overstreet able to take advantage. Tim Easley on the tackle. Well, that's one way to get out of Don Shula's doghouse. When the team needs you and you respond, you'll get the respect of your teammates. Seven yards on the carry. Sweep left. Kuchenberg, 67 up front. 
outstanding blocker and Kenny easily there to make the assist your best defensive player and one of the Graham's games great hitters so David Overstreet has carried twice for 17 yards time running down first quarter and uh, that wow. is the end of quarter number one here at the Orange Bowl in Miami the Dolphins and the Seahawks are scoreless <laughs> What's that Fred's getting? A computer. What's he know about computers? They taught him everything he needs to know. He can't even drive a car. He's gonna run a computer? Yeah. Yep, they sent him to a special class to learn how. Hope he did better in theirs than he did in ours. Yeah. <laughs> There's a special phone number he can call if he has any questions. He'll keep them busy. And if there's a problem, they'll come right here and fix it. Right here. Nobody ever comes here. <laughs> Who was it that gave Fred such a great deal? IBM. 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 You sure we're talking about the same Fred? IBM, an official sponsor of the 1984 Olympics. Today, they moved me in. Tonight, we're moving out. Turn it loose, turn it loose, turn it loose tonight. Course light, course light, turn it loose tonight. Don't hold back, turn it loose tonight. You have to feel when you're moving around. Course light is the one that won't slow you down. Course light. Happy holiday from the Orange Bowl in Miami. Marv Albert with Bob Trumpy. A very cool, crisp day here in Miami, Florida. It did rain throughout the night, throughout the early morning hours. The top was down yesterday. In fact, even Don Shula was concerned about uh, the field condition. As you see, Miami had the football most of this uh, first quarter. Marino again hooking up with Duper. And a Miami first down, Dave Brown on the coverage. And number 22. Field looks to be in pretty good shape. Yeah, this is prescription athletic turf, and it's supposed to trade. We'll watch uh, Dan Marino. The only guy he's throwing the ball to is Duper. And until those cornerbacks get up there on the line of scrimmage and try to take something away from this guy with his great speed, Miami can continue to do this now. 22 Brown comes out underneath. He's close, but they can't give him that much of a cushion mark. And it's a first down at the 33-yard line. Mark Duper off to the fast start. Word on on for a fragment. Twisted ankle, but uh, he'll be back. David Overstreet running well to the 25. Jacob Green and Bruce Schultz on the stop. There is real pressure on this Seattle defense, Mark. Jacob Green, their leading sacker and one of their kingpins of the defense, is they've got to do a better job at the line of scrimmage. You allow Overstreet or Bennett a, a little area through that defensive line, and they'll run all over you all day long. This is exactly what Shula wants. Throw it sparingly, run the ball a lot. And Woody Bennett has come on for the second out and two. Here's Bennett. Next stop. Jeff Bryant closed it up. Good penetration underneath the offensive guard. Bryant there to make the tackle. When a running back can't even get back to the line of scrimmage to really get ahead of steam up, the defense is doing its job. That was a good job by the Seattle the defense. So far, they've allowed them a lot of yards between the 20s, Mar, but shut them down when they get down by the 20. And it remains third down at about two. For tight end Roy Foster has come on. Andre Franklin is back. Franklin at Overstreet now in the backfield. Here's Franklin. First down to the 20. Keith Butler on the stop. And a good block by the right guard, Ed Newman, to open up matters for Franklin. This is a very talented offensive line with Stevenson, Newman, Kuchenberg. Those three guys in the middle, very similar to the yesteryear with Kuchenberg, Langer at center, and Larry Little at right guard. Those three guys are like 
triplets. Dolphins with Giesler and Laxo at the tackles. Kutrenberg and Newman at the guards. And Stevenson at center. Two minutes gone by. Second quarter. No score. Off a delay and a reverse. This is Clayton looking to throw for Duper. John Harris, the free safety covering Mark Duper. Harris not fooled. To his credit, he was right back there where he's supposed to be, and that's one of the signs of a Chuck Knox defense. Tom Catlin, the defensive coordinator, this is a very disciplined defense by the Seattle Seahawks. They don't have any real superstars, but they carry out their assignments. And I think Catlin and Knox feel that if they play together, they play better than trying to be a, an individual superstar. And Mark Clayton, the rookie out of Louisville, did complete a pass early in the season for a touchdown. So Don Shula going to the gadget book. More conventional style. Johnson. Touchdown. And Johnson. season out of Iowa State on the hookup with Dan Marino. Barb watched the block by 89 Nat Moore at the end of this play. Johnson out in the flat by himself to the right of the screen. Bam. Just gets in his way. Johnson waltzes in. And here is Uva von Schaumann. Don Strzok puts it down. Wow. He couldn't get it up on a point. And so the Dolphins held to a 6 nothing lead. I will be back in just a moment. Early second quarter, Miami on the ball. I just... We'll watch that failed extra point attempt again, and you can see Strzok has trouble with it, standing on the sideline in this blustery win. Sure, his hand got cold, and I think Von Schaumann just didn't have the confidence in Strzok that he was going to get the ball down on the ground. And the wind blowing the ball off the tee, so Von Schaumann has had an inconsistent season. Seeing it up, at the fourth extra point, missed this season he's 45 for 49 and in terms of field goals missed six of seven at one stretch then hit nine of ten so he's been up and down at the kickoff Miami in front by the score of six to nothing Zachary Dixon out to the 20 with acceleration 40 through the tackle midfield inside the 40 Zachary Dixon Robert Sowell on the stop. Zachary Dixon was a blur. No flags. The return stands. Rusty Tillman is the Seahawks special teams coach. Played in the NFL a number of years with the Washington Redskins. And the reason their special teams are so good is that they spend a lot of time on them. They're one third of this football team. 59 yards on the return. And that'll get you well in a hurry. Zach Dixon in his fifth season out of Temple, averaging 23 yards per kickoff return, sets up Seattle at the Miami 38-yard line. And here's Kurt Water with a big hole inside the 30 for a first down. Ernie Rowe inside linebacker on the tackle. Well, we can now answer the question, does Seattle have any jitters about being in the playoffs? Absolutely none. Are they in awe of the Miami Dolphins? So far, shown very little respect for them. 11-yard pickup. Miami has had the ball most of the way. Unofficially, we have 13 minutes of possession for the Dolphins. Seahawks just a shade over three. First down at the Miami 27. And again, Warner to the outside. Oh. Beautiful head fake. A little shake and bake by Kurt Warner. And it's amazing how he can keep going upfield and hips, shoulders, and everything else is moving sideways 
and Kurt Warner is able to get up the field. Now watch the way this offense comes up. One of the keys is Cullen Bryant. Watch these guys pull out like this. They All they try to do is make a little space for Kurt Warner, hold a block for a second. See that guard pull? All they need to hold it for a second. And that move, and he's upfield. Picked up eight, second and two at the 19. And the first down, picked up by Cullen Bryant. Cullen Bryant played for Chuck Knotts in Los Angeles, signed with Seattle as a free agent during the offseason. Gentlemen, just to the right of the screen there, Chick Harris, running back coach for the Seattle Seahawks. He's the wigwagger. Sends the signals in to Dave Craig. And a first down picked up by Seattle. They have done it primarily on the ground. Miami, four defensive linemen. First down at the 13. And here's Water. And that time, the swarming Killer Bees defense all over Kurt Water, led by the nose tackle, Bob Baumhauer. Uh, this will look like a real football game. When this one's over, they'll be muddy, soiled, sweaty, yes, bloodstained. <laughs> So Warner picked up a yard. It'll be a second down and nine. Kurt Warner has terrific field vision. Yes, he does. You're right. Good sense of where he goes, and he's able in two steps to build up a pretty good head of steam going towards the line of scrimmage. Five and a half gone by. Second quarter. Craig able to pick up. Let's see, just outside the six-yard line, Cullen Bryant on the reception. Six-yard line. So upcoming a third down at about three. So far, Miami not able to get to Dave Craig, but he hasn't thrown the ball very much. I'll make this point. William Andrews of the Falcons, Marcus Allen of the Raiders, Wayne Wilson of the Saints, Eric Dickerson of the Rams, and... Earl Campbell of the Oilers have all had 100-yard rushing days against this Miami defense, so Seattle feels they can run it. That has been the lone rap against the Miami defense. Crowd urging the Dolphins on. Cullen Bryant, touchdown. And that quiets the crowd here at the Orange Bowl. Bryant doing it against the free safety, Lyle Blackwood. In this stadium, playing at that end zone is very difficult coming out and going in because of the noise there. This is a great job by Seattle. Just a little flare pass to Cullen Bryant. Someone missed the coverage out there. That's too easy. And Norm Johnson will attack the extra point. Jim Zorn, at one time the starting quarterback for the Seahawks, will put it down looking to break the time. And he does. The Seahawks have taken a 7-6 lead on the Dolphins with 9 minutes, 19 seconds remaining in this first half. Well, it was Zachary Dixon that began the drive with this gorgeous 59-yard kickoff return. Now, one of the things that you look for in a big game like this is how your special teams play. Generally, they're the gauge of the emotion of the football team. And on that particular return, 59 yards, certainly put him in great shape. Colin Bryant capped it off with a six-yard touchdown pass. Dave Craig hitting three of five to open things up. Seahawks lead by one, seven, six. And the line drive kickoff is fielded. Colton Walker, 20. And Submarine at the 25-yard line. Walker, in his third season out of West Virginia, hauled down by Dan Dornick, a 21-yard return. So Miami will go first and 10 across the 25-yard line. We'll be right back. 
Well, things have been jumping here at the Orange Bowl for this uh, NFL playoff game, and more of the same here Monday night. Nebraska looking to uh, certify its uh, number one standing going against the University of Miami and right here on NBC. Yeah, the Hurricanes home field signs all over the city, go Canes, but Nebraska, I understand, has got about 20,000 people out here for the Orange Bowl. By first and 10 from the Miami 26 yard line, Seahawks 7, Dolphins 6. We are early second quarter. David Overstreet broke a tackle. And Overstreet is off to an impressive start. He's a rookie in the National Football League. Jacob Green on the stop. Overstreet was a number one pick of the Dolphins back in 1981. Then signed with Montreal in the Canadian Football League. Had some impressive statistics, but uh, was dropped after fumble problems. Joe Rose, the uh, Backup tight end on the sideline. I've been in that situation. You get your neck stung trying to make a tackle. Your arms go numb. It's called a pinch nerve. He'll yes. be back. Second and one. And the first down picked up by Andre Franklin. Shelton Robinson on the tackle. 8.25 remaining in this first half. You see what they're doing there? That's the newest innovation in jerseys. They lace that thing up under the player's arms and pull it tight so the defensive lineman have nothing to grab. That's one of their secrets. Grab the guy underneath his arm and then pull themselves by. Now they have jerseys with laces along with shoes with laces. <laughs> All right, Franklin and Overstreet in the backfield. And here's Overstreet again. Ball is on the ground. Uh, they blow it dead. Tackle by number 57. David Overstreet has become a very important man. What with the earlier injuries suffered by Tony Nathan. Short trap up the middle, center. Both guards very active there. Nathan carrying the ball very well, but oh, that's close. That's very close. He is ruled down, but on replay, that looked like it kind of got away from him a little bit. Overstreet has carried five times for 40 yards, so he's averaging eight per pop, second and four at the 46. Target with Mark Cooper, Terry Justin, the left quarterback on the cover. 16 yard pass play. Watch once again as Overstreet goes through here. Is there any point of him down? Well, we can't really see his knee on the backside behind the player. Nevertheless, it was ruled that Miami retains possession. And again, the cushion that the defensive backs of Seattle are giving Duper is entirely too much. Now they're being set up for coming up to the line of scrimmage and Duper going by him. And six catches on the day for Duper. First down, 37 yard line. On for Franklin. On to Franklin. Dolphins running well and mixing it up very effectively. You're right. Jacob Green on the cover up of Franklin. Picked up four. It's a second down and six. 6.15 left, first half. And the Seahawks lead it by the score of 7-6. Rod Essick on the sideline, stretching out his calf. Maybe a cramp. Hard to imagine on a day like this. Good start for Marino, who has not played in four weeks. So one with the layoff and the knee entry. Here's Overstreet. And difficulty getting outside. Strung out very well by the Seahawks' Keith Butler. That 34 defense that you see in the NFL nowadays is very good at, at trying to catch up with sweeps. The whole idea is the backside linebacker, there's nobody really to block him, and therefore he should be there to make the tackle. As you watch Von Schaman practice on the sideline, now it appears that Seattle is expecting to pass. Let's count some defensive backs. That's two, three, that's five, seven defensive backs, Marv. The Dolphins double tight end Joe Rose joining Dan Johnson out of the shotgun. Marino throwing for Cooper. Oh, an extraordinary catch by Mark Cooper.
with seven defensive backs. Dave Brown single coverage. This is 4-3 speed, and Brown can't cover him any better. What a catch. Great concentration on the football. That's his 11th touchdown reception this year. Last year, he didn't catch a pass. 32-yard pass play, and let's see how Von Schaumann and Scott fare this time. Five minutes, 43 seconds remaining in this first half as we take another look. And Marino hooking up with Mark Cooper. Marino now, nine for 11, 120 yards and two touchdowns. As you watch this play at that point, you can see there's no way Duper can catch the football. That's extremely good coverage by Dave Brown. And somehow Marino and Duper hook up again. And that's seven catches, and we still have 543 remaining in this first half seven receptions for duper all right they'll do it again the playoff record for receptions kellen winslow with 13 against the dolphins and that sensational overtime victory back in 1981 so winslow with 13 now being chased by duper and that is number seven on the day for Mark Super Duper. I'll uh, watch that play several times again. That's extraordinary. And it, isn't it odd that at times in the NFL you have a quarterback and a receiver that the quarterback throws it up and the receiver always seems to be able to get to it. It used to be Zorn and Largent, now Craig and Largent for Seattle. And the, the combination of Marino and Duper has just been extraordinary. It's almost magical at times. 5.38, remaining first half. The Dolphins now lead the Seahawks 13-7. Marv Albert, Bob Trumpy from the Orange Bowl in Miami. William Judson is holding it for Von Schaumann. Short kick, Zachary Dixon. Another good return by Dixon out near the 35-yard line, a 28-yard return. Dixon and the previous kickoff went 59 yards to set up a Seattle score. Miami assistant coach Bob Matheson, he of the well-known 53 defense engineered by Bill Onsparker, and Bob will be the subject of a very warm piece uh, that will be presented by NFL 83 coming up at halftime. Five and a half left, first half. Seattle first down at their 34-yard line. Kurt Warner taking advantage of the hole up the middle out near the 40. I noticed that the Miami Dolphins, because of the success of the Seahawks running the ball, have gone to a four-man front. Now, they have that... You see 73, Baumhauer in the middle. Good double team by Bailey and, and Bush. And look at Warner. Boy, he is a nifty kid. He can, he is third player taken in the draft last year. Elway, Dickerson, and then Kurt Warner. He's going to be there for the next 12 years, gaining 1,000 yards. And off the second and four, Warner changing direction to pick up the first down. Bob Brzezinski on the stop. Today's game is being brought to you by Chevrolet, official U.S. cars and trucks of the 14th Olympic Winter Games. By Budweiser, proud sponsor of the U.S. Olympic team. For all you do, this Bud's for you. And by AT&T, the more you hear, the better we sound. It has been prison. On the drizzly side is what I'm trying to yes. say. Drizzly. Off and on throughout the day. Field seems to be in good condition. First and ten, midfield. And Warner out of the backfield. And Kurt Warner stopped by Ernie Rohn right near the first down marker. Excellent call by the sideline of the Seattle Seahawks. Miami comes with a four-man front, two linebackers. And number 61, Robert Pratt, 
a little outlet out to the sideline. That's a good pick. There's Chick Harris, running back coach who sends everything but smoke signals into Dave Craig to get the play underway. And Craig is now four for six, 30 yards. Last week, 12 for 13, 200 yards, three touchdowns, and the uh, conservative style of Chuck Knox, but with the big weapon of Kurt Warner. First down at the 42, 320 left in this first half. Here's Warner following Bryant. Kurt Warner carries tackle, knocked out of bounds. Running it out, followed by the left quarterback, William Judson. Well, I'll make this observation and then we'll try to keep track of it. It appears to me that the Seahawks are putting Steve Largent, their great receiver, to the weak side, running to the strong side, expecting Miami to rotate their zone to Largent. And what they're doing is, they're, now you see the guys coming up here on him? They're running away from him. I think Miami is, is skewing their defense to Largent on the pass, and therefore the other side is open to the run. And to this point, Craig has not gone to Larkin. Second Correct. down and five. Miami leading by the score of 13-7. Cullen Bryant. So from time to time, we get a different look. Bryant stopped by Charles Bowser. And we're just under three remaining in this first half. It'll set up a third down and two. Seahawks making it to the playoffs for the first time in their eight-year history. Finished the regular season at nine and seven. Clinching the wild card on the final day of the season at home by beating New England. Last week, they beat Denver to make it three straight wins. Four of the last five. And this is a club that played through a very difficult schedule. Looked like Warner stumbled. And he's close to the first down marker. Seattle players think he's picked it up. But uh, we'll see a measurement. That time looked like he lost his footing. Yes. It's a little wet out there. You see, he's trying maybe one too many moves. His own weight kind of uh, made him fall off balance. I'll tell you this. It, this has got to be a great lift for Seattle. Miami in the 83 season allowed their opponents to convert just 38% of their third downs to first downs. And they are extremely difficult to run against in that situation. But, my, but uh, Seattle has had an excellent, done an excellent job in his first half of converting those third downs to first half, first downs. All right, 84, Sam Clancy. Basketball fans uh, may be aware of his uh, play at the University of Pittsburgh. And as you see, short. 222 left. What do you do? You go for it? Ground chuck? I go for it. They got nothing to lose. First time in the playoffs. Confidence in the offense. That's the type of coach that Chuck Knox is. Give it a shot. They're going. And we're down to 215 left. First half. Dolphins lead up 13-7. Missed the extra point. Sensational catch on the hookup. Marino 32 yards to Mark Duper. Earlier Marino to the tight end. Dan Johnson. The Seattle score set up by the 59-yard kickoff return by Zach Dixon and then completed as Craig hit Bryant on a six-yard uh, touchdown pass. Two-minute warning. We'll be right back. Jimmy Top. Well, it's a fourth and one coming up for Seattle. Norm Johnson, though, limbering up, uh, getting set. And as you can see, uh, he's been effective from long range. Very good, but I think this is Seattle's first trip to the playoffs. Let's let it all hang out. Now, I offer you this. Do you go to the line of scrimmage and try to draw Miami offsides, or do you just run the ball as a normal play? All right, we'll see. Seventh play of the drive is upcoming. Kurt Warner. And he's picked up the first down. Lyle Blackwood on the tackle. And Chuck Knox has great confidence in this offense and that young man in particular to give him the ball against a, a veteran experienced defense a defense that played in the Super Bowl last year and to run him on a sweep I mean that does nothing but elevate the the feeling of the players on the field Chuck's got confidence in us fourth and one we got to get it for him watch this hit by Blackwood yes sir he stopped him but not before he picked up the first down 
Bunt running down to a minute 20 left in the half. Watching in motion. Craig on play action, giving it away quickly. Paul Jones. It completes Paul Johns, the third year man out of Tulsa, the intended receiver. So far, they haven't even thrown one close to Steve Largent. Watch how close this is to being a catch inbounds. Good coverage. Johns gets up a little bit, juggles it. Excellent job by Miami. Judson was right where he's supposed to be. William Judson replacing the injured Don McNeil and came on very strong up and down early in the season that picked off three and one quarter against the Jets and that turned his season around second and ten from the 31. Ray going the other side for Larkin. First time they have thrown in his direction and one thing Miami does they can take away a receiver now you'll see short and deep coverage. There's small, then the safety. And Largen has caught a pass in 91 straight games in the regular season. The NFL's longest streak, and he is their best receiver, their most gifted, the one they rely on the most. And folks in Seattle very upset that Steve Largent did make it to, to the Pro Bowl for a fourth time. In fact, uh, they question the selection of Mark Cooper and of West Chandler. Tenth play of the drive coming up. A minute left of the half. Johns in motion. And Craig going for Larson. Once again, that short, deep coverage on Largent. Craig mad at himself. He wanted that ball in there. Watch again. Small at the line of scrimmage, just trying to disrupt the pattern. And the trickiness. And that was close. Ball thrown about five yards shorter. Largent might have had it. Same play attempted. Same coverage by Miami. And Craig upset with himself. 54 seconds left. And here's Dawn Johnson attempting from 49 yards away. Against the win. Sorn will hold. Dan Groning. William Judson, the left quarterback, with the block of the field goal attempt by Norm Johnson. This franchise used to have a lot of trick plays on field goal attempts. Good thinking by Zorn, just couldn't quite get it to Dornick. Miami takes over. Kicker Norm Johnson, special teams coach, coach Rusty Tillman with that blocked field goal. Rusty's a former linebacker, and linebackers are intense even when they retire. Rusty, not a happy former linebacker. Been known to tape up before games, even after retirement. <laughs> Miami leading Seattle 13-7 off that blocked field goal. Norm Johnson stopped by William Johnson. We have 48 seconds remaining of the half. Miami first down at their 31. They lead it 13 to 7. Marino on the swing. Intended for David Overstreet. Slightly overthrown. Seattle faking the blitz and backing out. 76. Oh, excuse me. 79. Jacob Green right there in the face of Dan Marino. Couldn't really get it to the receiver over street Bob incredibly at one point it appeared that Marino would last until the second round of the draft picked up after John Elway Todd Blackledge Jim Kelly Tony Eason and Ken O'Brien five quarterbacks in all selected in front of him. several reps on Marino and it uh, turns out he's had a sensational uh, rookie season Tony Nathan Making his return, stopped by Ken Easley. Nathan went out in the first quarter. And a timeout has been called. With 34 seconds 
remaining in this first half when we pick up that'll be third and one for Miami. In this first half, a tail of two wide receivers. Steve Largent on the right with a goose egg to this point. Mark Duper, seven receptions on the day. Miami able to take away Largent. Seattle not even close to stopping Duper. And the Dolphins, third and one at their 40. They lead it 13-7, 34 seconds left. Here's Nathan again. Stopped by Mano Tuyasasopo. Nathan back. His ribs apparently taped and better. Hurry up offense down to 20 seconds. Marino with time. The tight end Joe Rue for the first down. Miami with two timeouts left and stop the clock. 11 seconds remaining. Brown and Dufek on the tackle. So the timeout, Miami will talk it over. We'll be back in a moment. A preceding announcement furnished as a public service by the National Football League. 11 seconds remaining in this first half. Miami first down at the 43 in Seattle territory. Okay, let's look at the defensive backs here now for the uh, Seahawks. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight defensive backs in here. Three men rushing with just 11 seconds left. And uh, that's the full complement on the uh, <laughs> Seattle roster. We have Justin, Simpson, Easley, Moyer, Harris, Dufek, Brown, and Johnson. This is the time for that uh, hook and lateral, you remember, that they ran against right. San Diego a couple of years ago? All right, Marino, who is 10 for 13, firing, and it's picked off. Let's see. Yes, the uh, intercept. John Harris, the free safety with the first turnover of the half. Well, I tell you, you can't really fault the young man with eight defensive backs that back there. You got two guys just playing center field. He throws it, and I think the minute he throws it, he realizes, oh, no, there's one of those guys that's not supposed to be there. But it's tough to read eight defensive backs and where they're all going to be and what they're all going to do. Watch, top of the screen, John Harris. Good hands, excellent recovery, intended for Clayton, 83. First turnover of the half. And Miami quarterbacks have thrown the uh, fewest interceptions in the AFC uh, this season. 11 and all as time runs out. Good first half at the Orange Bowl in Miami. Miami Dolphins in front of the Seattle Seahawks by the score of 13 to 7. Back of the Orange Bowl, where the Dolphins lead the Seahawks 13-7, this AFC Divisional Playoff game. Bob, it's been a, a story in the first half of what has and hasn't happened. You're right. In the has uh, department, it's been Mark uh, Duper, and in the haven't category, it has been uh, Steve Largent, who has not uh, caught a ball. As we've uh, documented in the first half, it's, it's the defense's ability to take away a receiver, but we set it up, you're right, as the offensive guys uh, Marino and Duper for Miami, Warner, Craig, and Largent for Seattle. Two of the three for Seattle have responded. Largent has been totally taken away today, and it's been a big factor. Their biggest play, the kickoff return by Zach Dixon. That was the best field position they had on the day. And, of course, when you when you have a, only have to drive 30 or 40 yards, it makes the offense so much more efficient. This is a great return by the Seattle Seahawks. Right after a, a touchdown, it takes the steam out of Miami. Se uh, Seattle is right back in business. And in the second half now, they got to figure out a way to get the ball to Largent because he is the, one of the biggest offensive keys that they have. All right, so it's the Dolphins 13, the Seahawks 7. We'll be back right after these messages from your local station. Back of the Orange Bowl in Miami, a look at the first half statistics and look at the differential in the uh, yards passing. Their biggest play was that kickoff return, and they need more than that. 74 yards rushing in the first half is almost totally Kurt Warner. He's done his job, but the key in this second half is figure out a way to get the ball to Steve Largent. Uh, the Seahawks team over the years has relied very heavily on Steve Largent. He's a big play guy, 
and they now need some big plays. And Marino throwing two touchdowns, one to the tight end, Dan Johnson, and the other to Mark Duper, one of his seven receptions in the first half. Zachary Dixon, number 46, David Hughes. Zachary Dixon, David Hughes, awaiting the kickoff from Uva Von Schaman. Interesting here that Miami have it, has its choice in the second half. Excuse me, Seattle has its choice, and yet Miami kicks into the wind, so they'll have the win at their back in the fourth quarter. And this Zach Dixon, a look from the uh, end zone view. <laughs> that happened earlier. You see that little area in the middle of the field there that looks different colored at halftime. Between the hash marks, they came out with a uh, kind of a midget steamroller. And uh, this prescription athletic turf, there you can see the edge where the steamroller went just to the far side of Uwe von Schaman. A little rough footing, so they tried to settle it down a little bit. There is no truth to the report that uh, among those checking the field last night and early this morning was one time jet coach Walt Michaels <laughs> who had a little problem in that area last season David Hughes out to the 10 20 and reaching out to the 25 yard line a 20 yard return by Hughes First down well, Miami accomplished one thing they kept the ball out of the hands of Zach Dixon let's watch Vince Heflin, 88. He's one of Miami's headhunters. You got to give your body and mind to the football team in this situation. Really stick it in there. Good tackle. Seahawks, first down at their 25 yard line. In the backfield, Kurt Warner, Cullen Bryant. Quarterback is Dave Cray. Steve Larson to the right. First down, Warner. Stutter steps out to the 35-yard line. Nice block by the left guard, Edwin Bailey, who's replaced the injured Reggie McKenzie. Now that's really pressure on a defense. You've got Largent running an in on that side, and Warner coming out of the backfield right behind him with the guard as an escort. That's extreme pressure on the defense. We'll watch Largent. Once again, shut out in the first half. See the linebacker drop to the left-hand side of the screen right in front of him. And he's willing to make a block for his teammate. And it's a second down and one. We're just underway. Third quarter. Acceleration by Warner. And we'll have to wait and see where they spot the ball. He picked it up. Watch 75, Doug Betters. Defensive player of the year in the NFL. All gentlemen. Understand today is yes. Doug Betters Day where? In Whitefish, Montana, the uh, hometown of uh, Doug Betters. Got a telephone call of a hotel uh, yesterday, yesterday to uh, certify that fact. Doug Betters, who has had a splendid season. First down at the 36 yard line play action and Paul Johns had to come back for the football good catch for the first down very good choice by Craig you throw the ball out there in the flat if there's coverage anywhere close get it down into the ground so there's no interception and this is an excellent catch by Johns good concentration and that's the backside of that zone that's being rotated to Steve Largent Paul Johns is part of the Tulsa connection. Steve Largent in his eighth season out of Tulsa. Johns, as you saw, in his third year. First down, Seattle, 46 yard line. And here's Warner. Spinning and sliding and stepping and working his way for yardage. Mike Charles on the stop, number 71 for Miami. One of the great things about this Miami defense is their ability to pursue. That's August 76 on better 75, and the cutback by Warner, which is really what he does best, is set the defense up and then cut back against the grain. And they hold him about to about a three-yard gain, which is a plus for Miami's defense. Three minutes in, third quarter, Dolphins 13, Seahawks 7. Colin Bryant. Colin Bryant. A short pickup. 
tackle by Bob Baumhauer, number 50. Seattle Seahawks, a team that played through a very tough schedule, a club that beat the Los Angeles Raiders twice, including a 38-36 shootout in Seattle. They also won a fifth was lookout. Yards, third A.J. Dewey uh, heard on the play, and uh, they'll check him out. Seattle also won a 51-48 overtime game against uh, Kansas City, so uh, they have been lighting up the scoreboard. And, Marv, you know, over the last two and a half games, they haven't had a turnover. And you see in that massive humanity, number 77, he's on the bottom. That's the wrong place to be. 59 Blair Bush on top of him. Looks like he got his ankle twisted a little bit. They need him. Oh, AJ to the sideline. Third and about two. nose tackle highly unusual that you get a nose tackle who stays in on the pass rush normally they take those guys out but you can see the game 75 inside betters Baumhauer to the outside untouched and Miami's first sack of the day Bob Baumhauer four-time pro bowler he put of the regular season two weeks back with three sacks against the Jets here's Jeff West Back at his 30, he's had a very consistent season bouncing back from a year ago. Took a high snap and really hangs it up. Mark Clayton, 15, broke a tackle. Uh-oh. That's the punter, West again, who had to come up to make the stop. A 45-yard punt and a 24-yard return by the rookie from Louisville, Mark Clayton. You can see that being set up. Once he gets to this picket line over here, he's got teammates. He gets by one guy, and then a good job by the Miami Dolphins to make legal blocks and allow the return to stand. And of course, in all punt teams, he is the safety, that punter. Most punters just kind of get in their way and hope somebody else makes the contact. West big enough, athletic enough to make the tackle. And a good return by Clayton, the man to replace the injured Tommy Vigorito. Dolphins now, first down at their 34. They lead the Seahawks 13-7. Marino off the fake. Goes sideline again for, yes, Mark Duper. That is his eighth catch of the day. Picked up 15, bumped out by Dave Brown. Nice little finish of that pass pattern. Right to the bench and sit down. A.J. Dewey underneath that Dolphins slicker. Try to find out what's wrong with him. Duper now eight catches, 110 yards, and still that big cushion by the Seahawk defensive backs. And A.J. talking it over. Four and a half gone by in this third quarter. Muriel Harris has replaced Mark Duper. Over Street coughs it up. Recovered by Seattle. John Harris on the recovery. Trap up the middle. You can see Overstreet just gets it stripped right out of his arm by 56 gains. Ball on the ground. Harris picks it up. Miami's first turnover of the ball game. One each now for the Seahawks and the Dolphins. Baseball star Jim Palmer. I'll never worry about dandruff again. Sound impossible? Not with Tegrin shampoo. Tegrin has special medicine, so I don't worry about itching or flaking, and I don't worry about dandruff, even if I don't shampoo for a day or two. The Tegrin test convinced me. Tegrin controlled my dandruff not just one day or two days, but three days. I don't worry about dandruff anymore, so why should you? Use Tegrin. Tegrin works day after day after day. Tonight you're still a bachelor. Tomorrow's almost here. So I'm still a free man. Let's bring on the beer. Oh, oh. On this night you remember, it's so clear. You deserve to celebrate with more taste than beer. The food's got to taste so big, so 
so bold, so smooth. Let's all party with the Smith's Malt Liquor Bull. Don't say beer, say bull. Hey, gang, how about another bull? No one does it like the bull. Monday night, it's a battle for the national championship. Heisman Trophy winner Mike Rozier leads the most explosive offense in the history of college football. Number one Nebraska takes on Cinderella Miami in the Orange Bowl. Monday night on NBC Sports. Over Street on the trap from the right-hand side, 56 gains. Gets his hand right on the ball. And let me correct myself, that's one each. A turnover for Miami by interception and fumble. None for Seattle. And David Overstreet, who had the fumble problem in the Canadian Football League and that earlier this season after running so well, coughing it up at Seattle. Now first down at their 45-yard line. David Hughes turned for the first time and nearly broke. Hughes with the first down. He's a three-year man out of Boise State, and on the subject of fumbles, start of the year in the lineup alongside Kurt Warner, but he has had fumble problems. Miami came with a four-man front, and a great job by Bailey, 65 on Bowser. And Hughes with a good, quick opener up the middle, and a first down for the Seahawks. And bad news for the Dolphins on A.J. Dewey. Green left knee and out Ooh. the rest of the game. Ooh. Here's Craig firing in the middle and broken up. Intended for Steve Larger. 49 small on the outside and one of the Bruise brothers on the inside. This Miami Dolphin defensive backfield, their two safeties, the, the Blackwood brothers, are great hitters. They uh, feel no pain, and they make people pay. Now, this took too long to develop. You see that little hitch? That set up the weak safety to be right there. And if he'd have caught that one, they nicknamed him Houdini. That's the uh, Bruce Brothers secondary, a subdivision of the Killer Bees, are doing the job. Kurt Warner. Dolphins handled that very well. Mike Kozlowski. Four-year man out of Colorado on the tackle. Eight, two, third, and eight. So a third down and eight. Upcoming, Dan Dorning now replacing Cullen Bryant. And Dorning will be the lone deep back. There's Bill Arnsbarger on the sideline. Let's see what they come up with here. I see two, four, five, seven defensive backs. Now for the Miami Dolphins. And ten men on the line of scrimmage. Receivers for the Seahawks. Craig Lofting one. Hold time. On the long gainer. 27 yard pass play. John's tackled by Paul Lankford. That's the chance you take from the shotgun. Just a four man rush. Seattle picks it up very well. And this is extremely well thrown by Craig, a young man with not a great deal of NFL experience, allowing Johns to run under the football. The receiver looking, the defender not, a reception, and an awful big play. Look at there. That's a great throw and catch. And Seattle's in this ball game. Third catch of the day by Johns. First down at the Miami 13. David Hughes is turned back. He was picked up 12 on his previous carry at the start of the series. Ernest Roan, inside linebacker, on the stop. All right, well, let's put this in perspective. Seattle came in here a monstrous underdog. Their first trip to the playoffs, it is extremely difficult to win on the road in the playoffs as a wild card team. They're down here making a game of this. They must be commended. In fact, the thought was their best chance would be to get the early lead and then have Kurt Warner grind it out. And it has turned out in contrast. They're chasing the Dolphins. They're trailing 13-7. Here's Craig stepping up. Craig. Oh, broken up. Beautiful. Glenn Blackwood. Breaking up the pass and set it for the tight end, Charlie Young. In that situation, I must tell you that Craig made the wrong choice. 
what he tried to do was come up with a touchdown. Look at Dorning. Or he can run and get it to the end zone. Instead, he tried to throw it to Charlie Young, 87, Blackwood waiting for the, 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 the tip away. Unfortunately for David Craig, you can't really fault him, but with more experience, I think he would have made a better choice. There's the situation. Third down and eight. Largent in motion. Looking for Dorning. He's got him. And Dorning. Near the goal line. So Dorning. Picking up 10 yards on the play. It'll set a first and goal for the Seahawks. And I'll tell you what. Somebody turned the volume down on the Orange Bowl. That's Kozlowski on the coverage. They ran a nice little pick with the motion of the outside receiver. And Kozlowski kind of got tied up. There's a reaction by a Seahawk teammate. Byron Walker on the uh, celebration. First down. First and goal. Six and a half left. Third quarter. Here's Warner. Batman is going. The Seahawks indicate he's in. Yes, he is. Kurt Warner has brought Seattle into a tie. And the extra point can put the Seahawks in front. This is a great job by the Seattle offensive line. They just get a little crack in there. And all the ball has to do is cross the plane of the goal line. You see the line judge at the bottom of the screen. Hands in the air. Six points. He runs right over Judson, 49. And gets just enough of his body in the end zone. Norm Johnson, 49 for 50 on the season. And Seattle leads by one. But a flag thrown. Penalty marker down. So let's hold it for just a moment. Seattle on top by one, 14-13. The penalty called on Miami. So the point holds, and we'll be back after these words. Ball game, early second quarter. The mishandling of the snap. Strzok could not get it down properly for Von Schaumann. This following the Marino to Dan Johnson a touchdown pass play, and it has cost the Dolphins. I don't think anybody in this stadium, except for those people who came down here with the Seattle Seahawks, I don't think anybody expected this ball game to be 14-13. Seattle with 6:26 to go in the third quarter. They have played an outstanding football game. They have not been intimidated one single bit by Miami. And we talked about that pressure right at the start. Yes. No sign at all. Kurt Warner has had a workmanlike day. 17 carries, 71 yards. And despite the exploits of Dan Marino, Seattle by one. This is Fulton Walker. Slipped as he crossed the 15-yard line. This Seahawk football team has 26 players with three years or less experience. And this Miami Dolphins football team is the reigning AFC champion. Record of 12 and 4 in their last game two weeks ago on a Friday night here at the Orange Bowl. Dolphins beat the Jets 34-14. Miami has won its last five, nine of its last ten, seven up, one down here at the Orange Bowl. And they're trailing the Seahawks. The winner here faces the winner of tomorrow's AFC Divisional Playoff game to be seen on NBC, pitting Pittsburgh and the LA Raiders. Overstreet going outside, can't make the turn. And uh, the pop thrown by Dave Brown. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League, and it is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Miami Dolphins and the National Football League is prohibited. Marv, good choice by Miami. David Overstreet caused the turnover with the fumble. Don Shula comes right back with him on the first play. The next time Miami has the football, gives it to him. They're going to need him for the rest of the day. And now Nathan in the backfield. It's a second and nine. Dolphins at their 19. Six minutes left. Third quarter. 
Marino with time. And he took a hit. He got his arm hit. Jeff Bryant, the right defensive end, all over Dan Marino. Looks like he had the wind knocked out. Yeah, if you're a coach, it scares you when you see somebody get hit like this right in the stomach because a broken rib and all of a sudden you can't throw the football. He appears to be all right. No problems whatsoever, but it certainly did take the steam off the football, didn't it? Jeff Bryant getting to the quarterback, Dan Marino. It's a third down and nine. Dolphins have three tight ends operating. Johnson, Hardy, and Rose. High snap. Oh, look out. And let's see what the ruling is. That slipped out of his hand. It looks like somebody got his hand, their hand, right up in Marino's face from the shotgun. Bryant, Tuiasa Sopo, 74. Oh, that ball just slipped out of his hand. So it is ruled incomplete uh, pass. He came up empty. And Dan Marino had a rugged series. He also had a receiver open. Had he been able to throw that one, Duper was open. And back at his five, Reggie Roby set a Miami record this season, averaging 43 per punt. That's Paul Johns back deep at his 35-yard line. Johns, number three man, in punt returns to the AFC, and he's calling fair catch. Inside the 45, a 37-yard punt by Roby. Seattle back to the offense. Five minutes, 49 seconds remaining. Third quarter. Coming up Monday, you won't have to turn your dial. It all gets underway. 1.30 Eastern time. It'll be Charlie Jones and Bob Greasy reporting the action from the Fiesta Bowl. Dick Enberg and Merlin Olson at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. Don Cricky and John Brody from the Orange Bowl right here in Miami as Nebraska, led by Heisman Trophy winner Mike Rozier, battles number four ranked Miami for the national championship. Great day of college bowl action. Monday here on NBC Sports. Once again, Seattle starting from its 45-yard line. They went 55 yards in eight plays last time to take that one-point lead. And here's Kurt Warner. So Warner stopped at the line of scrimmage. Glenn Blackwood able to follow him from right to left. Pretty obvious that Seattle now wants to go to the ground shot, and that is give it to Kurt Warner, any way they possibly can. Interesting note, when Kurt Warner in 83 has rushed for 100 yards, the Seattle Seahawks are 6-0. and oh. They're running two tight ends in the ball game. Now they take Charlie Young out, back to the normal set. And Pete Metzelar is in a tight end. Second down and 10. And Trey goes to Warner. Water breaking tackles along the way. Now there's one thing to see a running back break a tackle against somebody, anybody. I don't care what his name is. But he just broke the tackle of Bob Krasinski. And Krasinski is one of the best tacklers you'll find in the National Football League. Number 59, he is a very sure tackler. And Warner ran right behind him. Watch out to your left. It's a good job by Craig to adjust. Now, from the right-hand side of the screen, watch this little hesitation. Boop, there goes Brzezinski, and there goes Warner. Bob Brzezinski, Miami's most solid defensive player, leads the team in tackles, although he did not make uh, the Pro Bowl. Third catch of the day by Warner. Here's Hughes, and he pulls Hughes. his way for the first down. David Hughes has been used in spots today, but used effectively by Chuck Knox. Now, this is a situation that Seattle had hoped for all week long to be in a situation where they're up and they can go to their running game, give it to Hughes, give it to Warner. This is what Miami wanted to avoid, to go into the fourth quarter in a close game with Seattle, a very gifted running team. And we have 420 left, third quarter, Seahawks by one. First down at the Miami 44, larger number 80 in motion. Uh -oh. oh, nearly picked off. Paul 
John's the intended receiver, and Craig was nearly intercepted by this man, William Judson, in a second year out of South Carolina State. Now you would ex look how close this is. Now you would expect same formation from Seattle, second down. Only this time he fakes the out and goes up, or at least you file that if you're a coach on the sideline, try to come back to it. If he's going to be quick on that out, we'll try to burn him by going deep. Largent to this side, Johns to the other side on this play. Second and ten. Hughes and Warner are the running backs. Warner to the outside and back in, inside the 40. Again, the shake and bake of Kurt Warner picked up six on the play. And no coach on the face of the earth will take credit for that. Joe Paterno is here in the Orange Bowl today. And uh, that's nature. That's, he's Five gifted. Up. Bob Trumpy from the Orange Bowl. Three and a half left, third quarter. The Seahawks lead the Dolphins 14-13. And a big play here, third down and five. 39. Mike Craig. That's broken up. It's Mike Koslowski got a piece of it. Craig, to begin with, does a good job to get away from the blitz, but watch Largen. They got people all over him. 44, the Miami Dolphins. Paul Langford, 42, Lyle Blackwood. They're going to make sure that Steve Largent does not catch a pass today. Somebody else may beat him on that Seahawk team, but Arnsbarger's decided it will not be Largent. And here's Jeff West. In his eighth year out of Cincinnati, Mark Clayton is back. Clayton on his 10-yard line. West punting for the third time today. Nice hang time again. Oh! Out at the three-yard line. So Jeff West with a beauty as it took a tricky hop. And with three minutes and seven seconds left in this third quarter, 36-yard punt, but of significance, the Dolphins will start out from their three. It's a little... And there is Chuck Studley, Bob, the first two and eight coach in the history of the National Football League to make it to the playoffs. <laughs> yes, uh, most recently the head coach of the Houston Oilers will take over from Bill Arnsbarger at the end of this season. Arnsbarger becoming the head football coach at LSU. Best of luck. Fine, fine gentlemen. Understand that uh, you know him at his time with the New York Giants. Not happy years for Bill yeah. Arnsbarger. He's been happy down here, though, with Shula. The Dolphins from their three, trailing the Seahawks by one. 14-13, they go to the ground. Out to the seven-yard line is Woody Bennett, Jeff Bryant. On the cover-up, just under three minutes remaining in this third quarter. Well, this Miami Dolphin football team in years past has been characterized as a team of characters. Down 14-13, 2.46 to go in the third quarter. Now second and... 94. <laughs> We're going to see how much character they have. Over Street and Bennett are the running backs. This is Bennett again. Pretty move by Bennett out to the 15 yard line. Dave Brown on the stop at eight yard advance. Watch Overstreet. This is a crushing block on Ken Easley. Who 45 knocks him out of there. Great job by Loxo, by Stevenson, by Newman, by Kuchenberg. And a first down for Miami at the 15-yard line. Cooper is out to the left. Now Nathan is in along with Bennett. Nathan was shaken up earlier. Here's Cooper. Cooper had very little room to operate along the sideline. Stopped by Greg Gaines. That's the play they started the football game with. Little throw out in the flat to Duper. Now his ninth catch, 116 yards. 
And he picked up six. It'll be a second down and four. Key injury suffered by the Dolphins' A.J. Dewey earlier this third quarter. Strain knee, and he is out the rest of the way. Tony Nathan was able to return. Andre Franklin also shaken up earlier, but he's all right. A minute 40 left, third quarter. Oh, mistake right there as uh, Nathan collided with his own man, Keith Butler, and Greg Gaines on the combination. Gaines, an outstanding play. Now, he's replacing number 56. Gaines is replacing Michael Jackson, who has been their defensive leader, but he was across the line of scrimmage from that outside linebacker spot. Oh, here we go with three linebackers out. Who we got coming in here now? We got the whole defensive backfield in there again. Three, seven, six, seven defensive backs now for the Seahawks. And it's a third and four. Dan Marino, the rookie out of Pittsburgh, checking it out. Down to a minute left, third quarter. A lot of movement, penalty flags. And this has been a penalty-free ball game. Here's Fred Wyatt. All start, number 67. All right, that's uh, the veteran, Bob Kuchenberg. Well, we expected some confusion at the line of scrimmage by the Seahawks offense. All start, number 67. Third down. So Miami, the club with the fewest penalties uh, in the NFL for an eighth consecutive season hit with their fifth call Seahawks have been penalized only once to complete my thought Miami has been the one that's been a little excited at the line of scrimmage maybe in part the two week layoff they have not played since beating the Jets on a Friday night here at the Orange Bowl two weeks back third down at nine First down. For this entire game, they've been throwing the ball to Mark Duper, and in this particular instance, he's the decoy, more the primary receiver. And of course, the thing that's essential is that they have some pass protection up front. They do an outstanding job on Jacob Green, Kuchenberg on Tuyasa Sopo. And Moore converts a big third down. 13-yard play, first catch for Nat Moore. Down to 10 seconds left, third quarter, first down at the 28. Marino going sideline, and it's intercepted. Pass intended for Clayton. Carey Justin, the left quarterback, on the intercept. Third turnover of the day, committed by Miami. Second time Marino has been intercepted as this third quarter comes to a close. The Seahawks have put outstanding pressure on Marino. Let's watch Nash on Stevenson. A little game up front. You see 77 uh, go inside. In this second half, they've been right in Marino's face. That's Bryant, 77 on the inside. And it just takes the steam out of the football. The interception, Seahawks got it back. And we'll be back after these messages from your local station. Seattle Seahawks have not committed a turnover at all this afternoon, and that has been the key as Miami intercepted a moment ago. So Seattle, without a turnover the last 11 quarters, the Seahawks have their best field position of the day as they start out inside the 50, off the swing. This is Warner. So Kurt Warner out of the backfield, his fourth catch of the day. This is an interesting offensive set for the Seahawks. What they're trying to do, there's the man with the interception. Congratulations. Three by the Dolphins today. But what Seattle has done all day long is look downfield, and their outlet is the receiver in the flat, Kurt Warner, with a guard in front of him to fake the screen. And He's caught four or five passes out there in the flat with some protection and escort. Worked very well for them. Second down and two. Just underway. Fourth quarter. Warner. With acceleration to pick up the first down. Ernie Rohn on the tackle. 
Now watch how Dave Craig runs back to hand the ball to Kurt Warner. He'll try to get back there as quickly as he possibly can. Now watch, he turns, gets it to him about five yards deep, and Kurt Warner's almost at full speed. And look at the hole in that defensive line. Whoa! And he reeled off nine yards on the play. 20 carries, 87 yards for Warner. And again, it's Warner. And he broke a tackle to pick up a couple. Bob Baumhauer, the nose tackle, able to pursue Warner, and uh, they have been chasing Warner all day long. That's Baumhauer, seventh season out of Alabama. He feels he made the Pro Bowl on reputation. Doesn't feel it's been one of his better years, at least for Bob Baumhauer. Started slowly, but has come on. There's the, uh, the point you made earlier. They're running the ball against the three-man defensive front right at the best part of the Miami defense at Betters and Brzezinski. Second down at eight. Seattle leading by one, 14-13. Oh. John's not able to hang on. Paul Johns has been an important receiver today, what with Steve Largent blanked to this point. You can't say enough about Seattle in this situation. You want to keep your team in character as long as you possibly can. And 13-23 to go in this football game. Chuck Knox's football team is playing like they belong. And I think prior to this game, there were a lot of people who wondered if they, in fact, did belong in the same field with Miami. I think that rumor has been dispelled. Paul Langford on the tackle of 14 yard pass play. He has been a big receiver. Largent shut down for the entire day. Craig has confidence in other receivers. He looks away to the outside, from the outside to the inside, and Johns is basically uncovered. Kozlowski 40. Langford, that's his fourth catch for 59 yards now. And a first down at the Miami 16-yard line. Warner. The Dolphins containing Warner. Bob Brzezinski, outside linebacker on the left, stopping Kurt Warner, 12-20 remaining in the fourth quarter. The Seahawks by one, 14-13. It was Marino to Dan Johnson, Marino to Mark Duper. A Seahawk touchdown set up by the 59-yard kickoff return by Dixon. Craig going to Bryant, and Warner ran one in from a yard away. That's Walker in motion. Penalty marker down as Craig had that middle wide open. <laughs> Referee Fred Wyatt sorting it out. It's against Seattle. First major penalty of the day against the Seahawks. They get the ball in the end zone here, going into the closed end of the Orange Bowl, where it's very difficult to call audibles. Deserve a great deal of credit. Holding number 61. That's the right guard, Robert Pratt, a 10-year man out of North Carolina. There he is, longtime starter for the Baltimore Colts. His second year with Seattle. Seven defensive backs for the Dolphins. Second and long. Second and about 20. And Craig throwing sideline. Number 49, William Judson stepping in front of Paul Johns. Craig not even looking in Largent's direction anymore. 
realizing that the defense is taking him away for the day. Let's go to Paul Johns, who's responded so far. With four catches, 59 yards. Large and again, Small should get a great deal of credit along with the other defensive backs who have really been all over Largent. In that case, it was Robert Sowell. Man-to-man -man coverage on Largent. Seahawks and Dolphins have met only twice before. And the Dolphins won both. Third down and 20. Dump off for Dorning. First down and more. Now check that inside of the 10 yard line picked up 17 so he's short of the first down. Dan Dorning out of the backfield. You're playing defensive back for the Miami Dolphins. Try to make the tackle. All he's trying to do is get down there for a field goal. In that case they had six defensive backs. One linebacker. And four guys rushing, and all they tried to do was just get a little bit of it back. And here is Norm Johnson from 27 yards away. Zorn will hold. And it's good. So Norm Johnson, who had his earlier attempt from 49 yards away, blocked. Able to add three more to the board. 10.42 left. Seahawks by four. From the Orange Bowl in Miami with Bob Crumpy, this is Marv Albert. The Cinderella team of the AFC, the Seattle Seahawks, leading the Miami Dolphins by the score of 17-13. 10 minutes and 42 seconds left in this fourth quarter. Fulton Walker awaiting the Norm Johnson kickoff. Walker at a six. 20. Up to the 25 yard line, the return by Fulton Walker. Today's game is being brought to you by Dodge Cars and Ram Tough Dodge Trucks. Dodge, an American revolution. By Merrill Lynch, whose ability to guide you through the intricacies of investing makes them a breed apart. And by IBM. Part of a point to consider in the second half. The Miami Dolphins have started with this drive at their own 24, their own 34, their own 18, and their own 3 in the second half. Seattle has started at their own 45, their own 45, and Miami's 49. The field position clearly in favor of the Seattle Seahawks in the second half. Woody Bennett on the carry, stopped by Jeff Bryant. Bennett and Nathan now in that Miami backfield. Well, in this... In this drive now for Miami, most important thing is protect Marino. He's been pressured in this second half, and he needs to be protected so he can throw the ball. Go back to the basics. Try to get back to Duper. See if the coverage is off of him as it was in the first half. Second and five. Duper right. Moore left side on the top of your screen. Marino looking for Duper. And broken up. Combination of Cherry Justin, the cornerback, and linebacker Bruce Schultz coming back on the combination. Now we'll see the way we, they defense this. Bruce Schultz just out of your picture, bottom of the screen, in front of Duper, and Justin behind him makes it more difficult to complete that pass. So, see, Seahawks have made an adjustment. Cherry Justin, who is headed to the New Jersey Generals of the United States Football League in a sixth season out of Oregon State. Seahawks, seven defensive backs. Third and five for Marino. The tight end, Joe Rose, has joined Dan Johnson. And Marino throwing the middle, broken up. John Harris got a hand on it. Harris and Dufek on the double coverage, but it was Harris slapping it away. Seattle is allowing the Miami receivers to run those 10-yard hooks which are good enough for a first down and slapping the ball away. They have played that seven defensive back set today extremely well. And Seattle's secondary has given up an average of 239 yards per game. That's the most of the AFC. They have done it defensively, and uh, this is a club that is last in total defense uh, in the AFC. So Paul Johns 
awaiting the punt. Reggie Roby, low snap. John's waving it off. And it bounces out across the uh, 35. A 37-yard punt by Roby. 9.33 left, fourth quarter. And the Seahawks will be in possession, leading by the score of 17-13. The winner here will face the winner of Pittsburgh and the L.A. Raiders. That game to be seen here on NBC tomorrow. Seattle Seahawks, who have beaten the Raiders twice this season, including a 38-36 wild one at the Kingo. And they lead the Dolphins 17-13, nine and a half remaining fourth quarter. Kurt Warner. Kurt Warner, Bob Baumhauer. On the tackle, all right, Miami jumping in front, 6-0 on the 19-yard pass from Marino. Cullen Bryant giving Seattle the lead as Miami missed that first extra point. Three yards, second and seven. Still second quarter. On the sensational catch by Duper, Miami took a 13-7 lead. In the third, it was uh, Seattle on the one-yard run by Warner taking a 14-13 lead and the 27-yard field goal by Johnson. And yes, it's raining again here in Miami. Lights have been on right throughout. Just under nine minutes left. Fourth quarter, Warner. Slashing his way. It appeared the Dolphins had him but was able to uh, make the move for the first down. Lyle Blackwood on the tackle. So Kurt Warner now has run for 99 yards. That is total against Denver last week in the wild card game. Watch the student body left. Guard pulls, guard pulls. And Warner has that ability to just read the block and turn it upfield. One, two, three steps. Watch him turn up. Bam, that step. He's going full blast. Great job by that offensive line of the Seattle Seahawks. No intimidation factor seen today. Seahawks towards the defending AFC champions. The stats on Warner. Now Warner on the reception. The Seahawks are being carried on the back of Kurt Warner. Run out by William Judson. That's five catches, 40 yards, along with the 99 yards running. Second and six. By the rookie out of Penn State. 1,449 yards on the ground during the regular season to lead the AFC. First round draft pick, third player taken in the draft overall, headed to the Pro Bowl. Huffing and puffing, but he's hanging right in. <laughs> you know the last rookie to lead the AFC in rushing? Earl Campbell, pretty good company. Second and six. Just under eight left, fourth quarter. Guess who? To the 45 yard line, so he's over 100 on the day. Doug Betters on the cover. Seattle is doing an outstanding job on Baumhauer, the nose man. That's Bush and Bailey with a trap around 61 on the linebacker and Warner up through there. Now 25 carries, 103 yards. Warner now becomes the sixth running back against the Miami Dolphins to go over 100 yards in this 83 season. It's a third down at about two. The Dolphins defensively operating without E.J. Dewey. He's out for the day with a knee injury. job. Largent just jumps inside of him, reads the blitz. He's the hot receiver. One man cannot be picked up. Watch Small. Whoa, great job. Outstanding job by Small. And Largent still without a reception. Steve Largent during the regular season. 72 catches. The number two man behind Todd Christensen of the Raiders. In touchdowns with 11 on the season. Christensen at 12. Mark Clayton at the 16-yard line. 
a 30-yard punt. And Miami now will take over six minutes and 55 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. The Dolphins, a huge favorite, are trailing the Seattle Seahawks by the score of 17-13. The Miami Dolphins, who have had great success here at home in the Orange Bowl, 7-1 this season, trailing the Seahawks, the crowd at the uh, Orange Bowl looking to get behind the Dolphins. Usually the decibel level here is extraordinarily high, similar to the Kingdom in Seattle. And the Dolphins with an important try get it going as Dan Johnson, the uh, tight end, has picked up the first down. Shelton Robinson, Keith Butler inside linebackers on the tackle, a 10-yard pass play. And Miami now, first down across the 25-yard line with six and a half left fourth quarter. Marv, once again, the point, second half drives, where they started by the Miami Dolphins, their own 34, their own 18, their own three, and this drive started at their own 15. Marino goes to the ground. Tony Nathan off the spin. It has been a low-key day for Nathan. Only 19 yards, seven carries. Bruce Schultz on the stop. Once again now, the Seattle Seahawks come with those seven defensive backs, and Miami has not figured out a way to beat it yet. And therefore, Seattle is going to keep coming with it. And Miami has a second down. And eight at the 28-yard line. Matt Moore to the left. Mark Duper at the near side. David Overstreet to the 30. Dave Brown, the right cornerback, up for the tackle. Proud of 71,032 here at the Orange Bowl. Capacity is a, a shade over 75. It has been raining throughout the afternoon. It has not bothered Kurt Warner. There was the concern about the field condition. It has not been a factor. Third down and five. And Cooper could not hang on. Dave Brown may have deflected it. How many times have we seen the ball just slapped away by Seattle defenders? About half a dozen times today, and I don't think Marino was off target. Dave Brown had Mark Duper covered extremely well. Watch that hand just tips it enough that Duper can't get the ball in his hands. And once again, Miami will give it back to Seattle. And this is Reggie Roby. And like Jeff West, he gets excellent hang time. Paul Johns back inside his 25-yard line. So four minutes and 44 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. It's a 41-yard punt held by the roll for Reggie Roby. Seattle by four, 17-13. A great day of football, uh, collegiate-wise, coming up Monday on NBC. Gets underway at 1.30, and it's capped off by number one-ranked Nebraska going up against the University of Miami right here in uh, sunny Miami. Yeah, the question is, will we ever see a bowl game again with sun in the background, Marv? It has been cold for all of them playing. 1.30 Eastern time, getting it underway. Bowl day on Monday here on NBC. 4.44. Remaining fourth quarter, Seahawks looking to pull off a huge upset. They lead the Dolphins by the score of 17. Oh, it is picked up. Gerald Small. to get the ball to Steve Largent just to continue a record. Cost him that. There was no way he was open. Their first turnover in 
12 quarters. Their first turnover today. And Largent wasn't within six yards of that football. I don't think Dave Craig ever even looked that direction. He yep. knew when he was in the huddle he was going to Steve Largent. Do you think so? Do you think Knox would look to hit Largent to extend a record at this point? No, I don't think it's the coach's choice. I don't think it's the coach's choice. All right, Keith Butler on the stop of uh, Tony Nathan, but Craig throwing on first down, picked off by Gerald Small, who had five interceptions during the regular season. Small out of San Jose State coming up with what could be the play with four minutes remaining. Fourth quarter, Miami now, second down. Second and 10 at the 16. Off the roll, Marino at four, four, inside the five. Watch this. Largin is not even close. He either did not read the blitz and stop and turn around, or Craig didn't even look out there. That's the first mistake he has made today. Miscommunication on one of them's part. Not sure which one. It is a first and goal off the 14-yard pass play to Moore. First and goal at the two. choice there and it did appear that the choice was made in the huddle not at the line of scrimmage very important extra point attack with a two-point lead for Miami three minutes 43 seconds remaining fourth quarter and off the two-yard run by Bennett with great blocking from Roy Foster and Bruce Hardy, as you will see, and the extra point, it's Miami now by three. You see 67, Kuchenberg, just get enough of that linebacker to allow Bennett to get into the end zone. Watch Kuchenberg on your left. Linebacker comes, there's Kuchenberg down almost on all fours, enough to get the linebacker off the line of scrimmage and Bennett in there for the touchdown. What a shame. They play almost an entire football game, mistake-free football, and to have the guy that had played so brilliantly this entire season to make that one bad choice. And Woody Bennett in his fifth season out of the University of Miami. He's been a short yardage specialist, able to run it in. Still much time left, three minutes and 43 seconds remaining fourth quarter, but now let's see how the Seahawks react in a pressure situation coming from behind, now trailing by three. Marv, the situation is for the Seahawks, it takes the breath out of you when you're on the sideline. You've got to recover. The coach has got to get the players together and say, look, we need a big kickoff return here to get back in this ball game. If we can get it to Zach Dixon, you guys do your job. We'll get good field position. Again, Judson holding it for Von Schaumann. David Hughes, 20-yard line, 25. 30. Good return by Hughes. Terry Totolo on the tackle, a 26-yard return. 3.32 remaining, fourth quarter. 
And this crowd urging the Miami defense on. Coming up tomorrow, we'll start the day at 3.30 Eastern with NFL 83 and then more AFC divisional playoff action, the Pittsburgh Steelers and the LA Raiders. And that's a rivalry that dates back to the uh, immaculate reception of Franco Harris back in 1972. That'll be right here on NBC. First down at the 34. In this situation now, Seattle's got to keep its poise. I realize it's very difficult in a playoff situation for a young team, but they don't have to play for a win. They play for a tie. They, they will be against the win if they get down there with 312 left, but they don't have to go another 63 yards. All they got to do is get to about the 25. It is a second down and six. And here's Warner running hard inside the 40. A reminder following the Dolphins and the Seahawks on NFL Report will be in the winner's locker room. We'll also take a close-up look at the Steelers and the L.A. Raiders and seven other features upcoming. And what a rivalry over the years between the L.A. Raiders and the Pittsburgh Steelers in the mid-70s. Third down and two. 225 fourth quarter Largen coming back to make a beautiful catch and a first down so the first reception of the day for Steve Largen 48 small on the outside Blackwood on the inside, the simple square in pattern. Look, he gets on the inside shoulder of Small. Blackwood just a little late to get there. And that is a big catch. 16-yard pass play. So Steve Lodgen with his first catch of the day. The two-minute warning has been provided. Seahawks trailing the Dolphins 20 to 17. Right now, here comes another one of those fantastic finishes. This, a look from the uh, Seattle point of view, with Miami leading Seattle 20 to 17. That's how far the Seahawks have to move toward that goal line or can tie it uh, with the field goal. Dolphins on the touchdown by Woody Bennett with three minutes and 43 seconds remaining in this fourth quarter. Lead it 20 17. Defensive coordinator and assistant head coach Bill Onsparger it out four man front by Miami crowd again urging the Dolphin defense on here's Dave Craig stepping up and throwing for Larger he's got it Steve Larger his second consecutive catch this one for 40 yards and here are the Seahawks on the doorstep now that's unbelievable. For 57 minutes, the Dolphins have been able to shut Largent down. Look at that batter. Oh, that's a great batter. When Judson looks back at the quarterback, that's when Largent breaks. And that's great familiarity between the quarterback and receiver. Craig on the other side does pay a certain price. He has tremendous confidence in the, the receiver. That's Charles on his back, number 71. Three points, three yards to win this football game. First and goal. Kurt Warner. Touchdown. And Seattle has the lead. No flags. The Seahawks come roaring right back. And now with a minute and 48 remaining. Seattle leading it by the score of 23 to 20. The Dolphins in the Orange Bowl in the playoffs are 7-2. and two. This is the Seahawks' first trip to the playoffs, and they're now leading the defending AFC champions. Kurt Warner, 27 carries, 107 yards, two touchdowns. And now, the extra point attempt, and again, 
of great significance. Here's Johnson. Zorn put it down, and it's good. And again, you look back to that missed extra point by the Dolphins with the Seahawks moving in front by four, 24-20, and a minute 48 remaining in the fourth quarter. This touchdown set up by two catches, two great catches by Steve Largent. And the combination of Craig and Largent have atoned for that tremendous mistake, the turnover that resulted in the Miami Dolphin touchdown. I'm sure Largent feels a lot better now, and so does Dave Craig. Dave Craig signed as a free agent back in 1980, played the final three games back in 81 when Zorn broke his ankle, played sparingly last year, and has come on this season. Warner, once again, great speed to the outside. Five plays, 66 yards, took just a minute and 55 seconds. That was, that's Jim Zorn in the jacket there, Marv, congratulating Dave Craig. You would hate for the season to end with that interception on your mind for six months. It has been erased. Congratulations. Steve Lodgen, who was blank up until these uh, final moments, coming up with the two catches to set up the go-ahead touchdown, but still a minute and 48 left as the Seahawks get set to kick off. Norm Johnson. This is Fulton Walker to the 10, 15, 20, 25. Oh. Fumbles. It is recovered by Seattle. Recovers the Number 51, Sam Merriman, a rookie out of Idaho, a seventh round draft pick, one of four draft picks to make the club, able to color the fumble. Miami's fourth turnover of the ball game. Seattle has had but one. There you see the hit from the back, the number. 63 of the Seattle Seahawks. That's Mark Hicks. And the recovery by Merriman. And the celebration begins. Sam Merriman, team captain at Idaho. Coming up with the fumble. Fulton Walker, who led the National Football League in kickoff returns, averaging 27 yards per return. On the fumble, a minute 39 remaining in this fourth quarter. Kurt Warner as Chuck Knox will look to run that clock down. Miami has three timeouts left. They've just taken one. It appears they may get the football back. That is a distinct possibility. But they've got to score a touchdown to win. A minute 31 remaining in this fourth quarter. And the timeout has been called. Stay with us right after the ball game. We go to the winner's locker room and also take a close-up look on NFL Report at tomorrow's game, matching Pittsburgh and the L.A. Raiders. Those two clubs battled in the playoffs five straight years in the mid-1970s, and in the last of those years, 74 through 76, the winner of the AFC title game between the Steelers and Raiders went on to capture the Super Bowl. Marv, I'm wondering what, right now what it's like in Seattle. And oh, let's include Alaska, where, they, where the Seahawks have a great many supporters. Are they dancing in the streets regardless of weather? Well, the Seahawks making it to the playoffs for the first time in their eight-year history. And there is a hello to Seattle from the Orange Bowl in Miami. Seahawks went 9-7 and seven in the regular season. Was that Ahmad Rashad looking for some uh, <laughs> cameo? Uh, one thing for sure, Seattle has got the respect of the entire National Football League after, if it remains this way, winning their fourth straight football game. It is a second and ten. And the gift to Cullen Bryant. Last week, Seattle beat Denver 31-7 in the wild card playoff game, so... It's three in a row, four of the last five for the Seahawks, and looking to hang on right here with a minute and 25 remaining, and a timeout called by Miami. They're down to one timeout left. 
The executive producer of NBC Sports, proud new daddy, Michael Weissman. Congratulations. And the coordinating producer of NBC's football coverage is Ted Nathanson. Today's telecast produced by George Finkel, directed by John Gonzalez, technical director Lenny Snucker, associate director Joe Michaels. And tomorrow, starting at 3.30 Eastern time with NFL 83, it'll be the Raiders and the Steelers from Los Angeles. Marv, question for you. Would you rank this as one of the all-time upsets in the last 10 or 15 years in the NFL and playoffs? I would think it is uh, right in the ballpark. I can't think of another one that's any bigger than this one. And it's been a terrific back and forth ball game. Miami getting to the early lead. Marino to Dan Johnson, that extra point miss. With uh, Van Schaman and Strzok not able to hook up has really cost. Let's see, what are the situations now? No matter what happens, who wins tomorrow, Seattle must travel, correct? It's either to Pittsburgh or to Los Angeles. <laughs> Minute 25, remaining fourth quarter, third down and six. And here's Warner. And Russell out of bounds. Kyle Blackwood on the tackle. You see the clock at 119. Actually, he just made a gigantic mistake there. Uh, the Dolphins have one timeout left, and Warner ran out of bounds, stopping the clock. It's now fourth down. You got several big choices to make here. What are you going to do? They're going to try the field goal? Should never have gone out of bounds. Never. Let that clock run. It's going to cost Seattle at least 40 seconds, and there's a minute and 19 left. And here is Norm Johnson coming Ooh, on. This scares me. Looking to extend to a seven-point lead. He's one for two on the day. This a 38-yard attempt. Zorn awaits the snap. A clutch field goal by Norm Johnson, the second-year man out of UCLA, who is now 20 for 27 on the season. Earlier, hit from 27. He had one blocked from 49. Watch the expression of Don Shula as he followed the trajectory of, of the boot by Johnson. Marv, I've been impressed by Chuck Knox's extreme confidence in his football team today. They went for it on a fourth-down situation, converted it, in that particular situation, after having a field goal block, he made no hesitation to send his field goal team out there again to try for another attempt, which is good. And Seattle with a 27-20 lead, a minute 15. Remaining in the fourth quarter, you saw the timeouts flashed on the screen. Miami down to one left. Seahawks of three remaining. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank our statistician, Steve Dance. Our assistant stat man, Bobby Harris, spotters Bo McCombs, and Harry Francisco. And uh, thank you all. Marv Albert, Bob Trumpy from the Orange Bowl, as Norm Johnson gets set to kick off to Fulton Walker, who uh, coughed it up last time out of the box. They need a big return from him. He's the AFC's leading kickoff returner. And now some problems uh, with the win. And uh, let's see, Kerry Justin just uh, offered to hold it. Johnson says, now let's give it one more shot. All right, Walker comes up to the 10. 20. Ran into his own man. Bubble. Bubble. And it's recovered by the Seahawks again. Turnover number five for the Dolphins and Walker with two in a row. Dan Dornick on the recovery and will not want to give up that football. And the celebration begins. That plane back to Seattle, the people inside will supply most of the power. <laughs> it will lift off by itself. Dan Dornick in a sixth year out of Washington State spends the offseason in medical school at the University of Washington. His dad and brother are physicians, and uh, that time picking off the fumble of Fulton Walker. Kickoff coverage team, punt coverage team by the Seahawks, the best in the league. 
against the number one kickoff returner in the league. Today, Seattle's won that battle, too. It's going to be a tough offseason for Fulton Walker. Minute eight, remaining fourth quarter. Miami has one timeout left as the Seahawks look to run it out. Remember, Fulton Walker had that 98-yard touchdown in uh, last year's Super Bowl on a kickoff, first kickoff ever returned for a TD in a Super Bowl. Seattle Seahawks took two out of two from the uh, Los Angeles Raiders. I did that 38-36 uh, game with John Brody at the Kingdom in Seattle. That was next to the uh, the Washington Redskins Los Angeles uh, Raider game, one of the pulsating games of the season. Matter of fact, Marv, I think uh, the Seahawks have beaten the Raiders five of the last six times they've met, going back a couple of years. So a minute three remaining. Well, Seahawks, a very happy group as they look to complete this enormous upset and advance to the AFC Championship game, game that will be telecast by NBC. Miami using its final timeout. Isn't this something what Chuck Knox has done? Come in, put in a new offense, a new defense. He, uh, acquires a 33 year old running back who last year carried the ball just twice and Cullen Bryant trades for a center supposedly too small and Blair Bush brings in a, a tight end named Charlie Young all for leadership along with Reggie McKenzie tells these players they're good believe in yourself and we'll be fine and it comes true third down, third down play upcoming Chuck Knox who has not fared well over the years in matchups against Don Shula and Knox the first coach in NFL history to lead three different teams to the playoffs also did it with the Bills and the Rams going into today Knox had won only two of ten matched against Shula this the is clock the, running down. excuse me Mark this is the biggest one he's ever won and Kurt Warner who rushed for 113 yards on 29 carries now makes it 7 and 0 when he has gone over the 100 yard mark. And there's Knox being carried off the field as time has run out on the Miami Dolphins. The Seahawks have come up with the victory. In an upset, they have defeated the Dolphins by the score of 27 to 20. Seattle Seahawks, who have made it to the playoffs for the first time in their eight-year history, now advance to the AFC Championship game, which is one step away from the Super Bowl. And I'll tell you what, Miami's got no excuses. Seattle flat outplayed them for four quarters. And for Chuck Knox, it means eight of his 11 years as a head coach. He has taken his club to the playoffs. Miami Dolphins, who have the splendid 12-4 regular season, drew a bye, did not play last week, while the Seattle Seahawks knocked off the Denver Broncos in the wild card. It's Kenny Easley of the uh, Seahawks in a private moment in the Seattle locker room. Now, congratulations to Mike McCormick, the general manager. He hired Chuck Knox and ground Chuck. It won out today, didn't it? 26 players on this team with three years or less experience, just five players with playoff experience, only two starters. And Ahmad Rashad will be uh, joining in this uh, happy uh, locker room celebration of the uh, Seattle Seahawks in a moment on NFL Report. It's uh, 64, the left tackle, Ron Essing. Marv, in an athlete's career, there is no place you'd rather be than a winning locker room, and there are a million places you'd rather be than a losing locker room. Kurt Warner, who had another magnificent day, 
Robert Pratt, 61. Hughes, 46. Clancy, 84. Congratulations. We saw the congratulations to uh, Sam Merriman, who uh, recovered that Fulton Walker fumble. And dejection on the part of Miami Dolphin fans. And their players who were beaten here by the Seahawks by the score of 27 to 20. On a windy, cold, and rainy day here in Miami. Blair Bush in front, 67, Reggie McKenzie. Seahawks did have some support here today. They uh, did have a group of fans making it from the Northwest. The Seattle Seahawks over the Miami Dolphins by the score. 27-20 will be back right here at the Orange Bowl in Miami after we pause for these words. Back at the Orange Bowl in Miami, we are inside the Seattle Seahawks clubhouse for some private moments. Just minutes ago, Reggie McKenzie leading the cheers. We are live in the clubhouse of the Seattle Seahawks. Who will get the game ball? Head coach Chuck Knox presiding over a happy group of Seahawks who have upset